Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Today we're here at the VAB at uh, Cape Canaveral and we're going to try to slap together something absolutely new in our pursuit to put a Kerbal on the surface of the moon. Uh, we've got some time while we're waiting for course corrections on what I'm assuming is going to be a failed Mars mission. And uh, more than a year and a half until our Jupiter 2 will hit the Jupiter's sphere of influence. So in the meantime, we got a bunch of time to kill. Uh, set the height of okay, we don't really need any of that, and we can put Mick Jeb away. So this is our only uh, crude, crude capsule that is available at the moment. I've decided to kind of start from the ground up instead of retrofitting some of the uh, Omega launched vehicles um, in hopes that we can build something cool. So I do plan on speeding this up in post and just talking over it. So. Yeah, until then, um, I guess enjoy the build episode. All right, well, this is all done in post, and so my commentary may be a little off of what's happening, but uh, our first step here is obviously to uh, build out the uh, command pod. Um, I'm deciding to go a little risky and put the heat shield directly on the capsule instead of uh, underneath a support module like I have for previous versions of this. That does mean including more uh, support structure at the top, including uh, more life support and uh, another battery, just in case we get stranded. We've lost Kerbals before. And prepping the chutes and getting a docking port on top. Now, uh, of course, don't forget your solar panels and your antenna. Angle them appropriately. Uh, I am going to give this its own set of maneuvering thrusters, just uh, having, since it'll be at the top of the service module, they'll be the best way to uh, change attitude. And we'll just make some small adjustments here and start to build out the rest of the service module. It's got its own life support and it's got tanks for um, waste and stuff, but uh, according to TAC life support, it's got way too much life support and not enough room for uh, wastewater and um, waste solid. We're also going to include a little more lithium hydroxide and just double check our numbers here. And yeah, it looks like uh, all in all 61 days of oxygen, 53 days of food and water, which should be about double what is necessary. Well, way more than double. We're hoping to keep this mission time at under 20 days, unlike the last few. And I've decided to go with an AJ-10 Advanced instead of the service module engine for this one. Um, it has unlimited burn time, but only four ignitions. We should only really need three. Uh, well, we really should only need two. One to orbitally insert at the moon, and then a second to depart the moon and come back to Earth. So two extra ignitions shouldn't hurt anybody. Uh, some really big thrusters for uh, docking control, solar panels, and of course, big golden balls at the bottom, just uh, for a little extra fuel. All right, and now I'm going to be rebuilding out a launch escape tower, because I did not save my previous one as a sub-assembly, which I really should have done. So there's the four primaries, and then I need to add these individually because one of them needs to have less thrust than the others to angle it away from the rest of the rocket. And then, of course, we'll give it a nice aerodynamic nose cone, tuck everything together, and paint it, make it look pretty. So that is our service module section, and now we can go ahead and build out our uh, transfer stage. But first, well, let's get it sized appropriately so we can get our avionics unit on there. And then we'll bring in our Mark II lunar lander that I built a long time ago and have never carted to the moon. We're also going to lock all the fuel tanks to make sure that uh, cross-feed doesn't completely screw us over, which is good to have. We also have an upgrade now for the Asteris engine, and yeah, I just messed up and moved the pod and didn't mean to. Control-Z will fix that, but we do have to go back and relock everything. Um, the upgraded Asteris just has a better uh, vacuum ISP and a little more thrust. So with the fuel that's already on this uh, lunar lander, we should have more than enough now to make a successful lunar lander and then launch to re-rendezvous with the command pod. So here is hoping. Now just setting up our action groups for the abort system. The action groups on the lunar lander should already be set. I have not 
messed with those, which is good because all the equipment is kind of hidden. So that's our cargo to the moon. Now we'll just uh, play with staging because when you bring in a sub-assembly, staging always gets really screwed up and I hate it. But it's <laughs> a little bit of work now, saves you so much headache in the long run. All right, and now it's time to build out our uh, transfer stage for uh, translunar injection. We've unlocked the J2 engine and paid for it, and it was expensive. But we have the J2, which uh, I think was one of the missing keys as far as getting something that heavy all the way out to the moon. Although it does look pretty awkward up there, I think uh, there might be some changes to this design in the future. Well, oh, anyway, uh, it's going to need a means to ullage, so we're going to include these extra little tanks down here at the bottom. I just need, trying to get them lined up. They just don't really want to cooperate and upgrade these thrusters. It's having a bit of a problem getting them to select the correct fuel type. I think there's a bug that makes you pick something that's kind of off, but I wanted them at Aerozine 50 and N20. And so now I can set the fuel tanks, make sure everything's good. Our delta V on that stage is pretty impressive. Our J2 stage is going to give us something like 54, well, no, 5,500 meters per second. I just realized that I sized it up a bit, which uh, is really impressive. I'm very excited to have unlocked that engine because it just uh, it means there's so much more that we can move around now that we have a really powerful hydrolock stage. And so for this uh, stage underneath it, going with the J2s again, uh, five of them. So I, I didn't really intend for this to be a Saturn V analog, but it looks like it's really coming along that way. And you can see to meet the adequate burn time on something so huge with all these engines, the stage itself has to be massive. Uh, already knowing that we're going to run into a height restriction requirement, I include some more internal tanks. Just a little gamey, but I, I don't feel like the 7 meter restriction is very fair, so I, I don't mind doing it, and it still looks pretty good at this point. <laughs> Alright, and now we've got our ullage engines, and now it's time for the big boy. We have also, well, we are, we have available to us, but I have not yet unlocked the amazing F1 engine. So, yeah, we've already run into a height restriction, and that is a ridiculously big engine. It's like, oh, wow. So, if we want the lifting power and the delta V that we're going to need, we're going to end up going with five of them, just like Saturn V. Um, I don't feel too terrible about the gaminess that I've had to invoke for the sake of getting this rocket out to the pad. I've got a lot of undue restrictions being placed on me currently that I'm not too particularly fond of. But, wow, that thing is huge. And it costs a lot of money to unlock. And knowing that we have this height restriction to deal with, I'm going to start uh, tweaking as much as I can to try to get us underneath that height limit. It's just not working. This rocket is just too damn tall. But, alright, we'll at least get our fairing size so we don't have to deal with that. And we'll start trying to tinker around with tucking engines in and moving things. Uh, basically what I'm going to end up doing is shortening up this second stage and then expanding those lateral tanks a bit to try to help with our height issue, which is becoming a problem. <laughs> Although had I remembered something else that I could do, I could have saved myself a lot of headache in this regard. I even go so far as to thinking maybe I could save a lot of tonnage and some height by including an E1 instead of an, another F1. But the numbers just aren't there. So I go back to the five F1 setups and then decide to paint it. We need to get it on some clamps because otherwise the pad's just going to explode and probably take the rocket with us. Now, for some reason, even if the rocket doesn't move up or down, having just the clamps on there adds like three meters of height. So I end up having to tuck those engines in quite a bit and shorten out this stage even more, which 
ends up costing us uh, quite a bit of delta V, uh, about 200 or so odd meters per second. But yeah, if you just missed it, I just shortened up the launch escape system. And well, a build time of 214 days ain't so bad, but I guess we should really take it for a test run. What do you say? Simulate, 35 minutes should do it. We just need to see if that J2, that final J2 stage, that upper, the single J2 engine, uh, can get into orbit with enough left in its tank to push to the moon. So really we're looking for about a 2,000 meter per second buffer. You know, it was like a, a bit over five in its tank. Or no. Uh, all right. That is a big effing rocket. <laughs> and we apparently moved it a bit too much inside the VAB because we're only half on the pad. And, oh, I forgot to move these to their own action group. Great. Solve that right quick. No. 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 Come on. Uh, my processors are having a heart attack. All right, let's uh, fire up those incredible F1s. Ooh, they are lit. That took a minute. And avionics is locked. Because avionics is locked. Wow. But we are moving. And Valentina flying this uh, incredible test flight. Here's hoping. I, I don't know when avionics will unlock, so we will probably have to add another core to this just to maintain control off the pad. So we really should start our gravity turn soon-ish. But uh, it's good to see that all of our engines are burning equally, although we are way the hell off course now. Yep, gonna have to add the second avionics unit for certain. Avionics control, we're about to lose this. Please no, please no. And yeah. Abort. <laughs> That's Surely a strange rotation, but the abort sequence worked. We can ditch that now. Alright, looks like our itty bitty drogue shoots are out. Well, that system works. Good to know. Man, it's hard to believe that shoots that tiny will actually do anything. Um, okay, good. Our RCS thrusters are firing. It means I thought I locked all the fuels up here, though I could be wrong. Yeah, that's auxiliary life. Uh, da, 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 da. No, okay. All right, good. They are using. Internal fuels. Oh man, I feel kind of bad about all of the crap I have just scattered all over the place. Well, new and interesting. And there go our primaries. Those are of reasonable size. I don't know why the drogue shoot model renders so small. Yes, raining. <laughs> a miracle we haven't destroyed a building. Oh, that impact was pretty close. <laughs> Is there any stuff coming down? Oh yeah, there's still stuff coming down. Good job. 
Shoots her out. This is a good uh, full weight shoot test. Or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's a par for the course test is what it is. Whoa. That was uncalled for. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else that's going to hit it. But, all right, well, I'll be working some of those tweaks out e off camera or in the next episode. Anyway, thanks for hanging out, everybody. I will see all of you tomorrow.